this out. I got given an Illumin multimedia LCD projector. Wow. Like, I must have just won the lottery. And uh, had a customer say, hey, he bought this from a... I think he said he got it from a guy that was selling him out of the back of a truck. And uh, bought this thing and uh, thought he had won the lottery too. But uh, as he found out, eh, performance, hmm. Well, let's take a look at the specifications of this sucker. I like this. Illumin Projection Solutions patent pending technologies are for the world's finest music and home theater systems. Hmm. What do you think? And I see this little design and engineered in the USA. Okay. All right. It comes even with a spare bulb, but just look at these specifications here. It's a digital HDMI projector. Hmm. An HDMI projector. Last time I checked what HDMI stands for, it was an interface cable. It stands for a high definition multimedia interface. But here's the good one. One chip, one inch, HDTV resolution ready. Brightness, 6,000 lumens. Aspect ratio, wide and standard. Special features. 3D optimized light engine. Advanced picture in picture with digital video noise reduction. Advanced multi manual zoom. The lamp. Where are we here? 350 watt ultra bright lamp. Color temperature 9300 degrees Kelvin. Lamp life 8000 hours. Contrast radio 120,000 to 1. Uh, yeah, okay, right, from an LCD panel. A single chip, a single panel LCD at that. And these are the specifications. Yeah, I'm really going to hold my breath that this thing is going to really perform well. And I want to show you something. I'll show you the spare lamp. When I opened up the package, I just about pissed myself. I was laughing so hard at the lamp that the thing uses. Kind of looks an awful lot like that lamp, doesn't it? Hmm. Uh, this is a 150 watt lamp that came out of my aquarium for my fish tank. It's a double-ended metal halide. This one's a Coral Life. Oh well, they're the same lamp. Maybe this one's rated a little higher. I doubt it. I think it even looks like a 150 watt lamp. Maybe they're driving it a little bit harder or they're lying. It could be a 350 watt, but it's certainly not a projection lamp you know, by any means of the sense. If you know what a projection lamp it looks like, it's a, a ultra high pressure lamp with a parabolic reflector and well I've, I've shown them in other videos but they're not like this they're a tiny little lamp that operated at extremely high pressures on the bottom of this piece of junk there's a screw that opens the lamp housing so let's just take a look at what this lamp actually is doing inside this thing now this unit is brand new the guy that bought it used it once and laughed and got rid of it and uh, couldn't even sell it nobody wanted it but I don't blame them I don't blame anybody for not wanting this thing. We're going to give this thing a shootout too. I'm going to hook this thing up. I'm going to let it run. I'm going to show you how it looks. I'll compare it to my uh, 10 year old ViewSonic. We'll do a little comparison between this thing, this 1080p projector, and my ViewSonic which is not a high definition. It's a, it's a high resolution, but it's not a 1080p. It's a, 7, it's a 720. We'll compare this to the 720 DLP. We'll see which one's got a better picture. Well, I can tell you right now which one's going to have a better picture. It sure is not going to be this thing, that's for sure. Okay, oh, look at this. This is real high technology. Let's just put a metal halide light in behind a, a lens and put a little reflector in behind it. Yeah, that's real cutting out. I bet you. <laughs> I bet you this thing doesn't even have a lamp lockout. Let's see if we can turn this thing on just for the hell of it. Let's try and turn this thing on with the cover open. If I can find the buttons on it. Where's the button? Ah, I guess the where's the power button? Eh. There's the power button. Oh, oh my God. So here, now we have a projector starting up 
with the lamp housing open. If you can believe that. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush. These lights are bright, for sure. They're bright. It could be a 350 watt. I don't know. It's too bright to look at, but then so is a 150 watt light. But it's not a proper projector light. This is the type of light like you'd... Well, it's more like the light that's right there. That's a 400 watt one. You're not going to look at that light when it's on either, that's for sure. I mean, they're bright. But it's not a proper projection lamp. I just noticed something. I didn't even look at this before. Remove the screws. Fetch the lamp out. Handle carefully. Yeah, okay. Again, real well-designed product that the unit can even start with the, the cover... The, the, even the secondary covering, this should have a lockout on here so that as soon as you remove the screws to take the cover out, take the cover off, the projector extinguishes. Every other projector on the market, there's no way you can start them up. They have a, a safety interlock that will shut that projector down as soon as you remove any of the covers. So right there you know that this thing is a little bit questionable. Let's just see if we can actually get a picture. I can't even see anything in my garage here, but it's it's not that bright. There's a couple of overhead fluorescents, but I see nothing. But let's just for the hell of it, we'll turn out the lights and just see what this thing looks like. I'm not going to hook up a source to it at the moment. I'm going to go get my other projector. We'll set them both up, and then we'll do a shootout and see how this thing looks. But I tell you, this thing is just, uh, you know, I mean, well. I mean, I can look into that lens and it's not very bright. I can look at, I could never look at my, I could never look at my ViewSonic. It'd be like looking at the sun. It actually does throw a picture in the totally dark room here of my garage. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, it has a picture. <laughs> you can see all the pixels. There's no way, there's no way this is 1080, right? You can see the pixels. But uh, again, We'll put a video source on this thing and take a look at it. And then we'll compare it to a real projector. Now remember, I'm in a totally dark garage now. Let's see what happens to this picture when I turn on the lights. Oh! The picture disappeared! Yeah, there's no brightness to this thing at all. You have to be in a completely dark room to be able to see anything off this. And that's where the difference will be, you'll see, when I bring the other projector out. I really wish I could show you the picture off this thing, but I can't even show you the picture off this thing. I've got my little Zotac multimedia PC plugged in here using HDMI, <clears throat> and it's no signal. But we can actually look into the lens of this thing and actually see the LCD panel yeah, there in all its glory. You can actually look at this thing. This is supposed to be a black screen, but, well... LCDs don't do very good for blocking out the light. But yeah, this is real good quality construction. See the light leaking around the edge of the panel there. Yeah, that's going to be great for contrast. A uh, real high quality unit here. I tell you, but it won't even pick up a signal from my computer. Turn off the computer. Oh, now we got a blue screen. Nice bright blue screen with the computer turned off. Turn it on. It won't even recognize it won't even recognize the computer. Oh, I don't believe it. It actually booted up. It actually boot the thing up. Um, but the uh, uh, picture is leaving a lot to be desired. Holy smoke. I can't even read. This is supposed to be a high definition picture and I, I kid you not. Yeah, this is a 1080 picture. I can't even read the print on the screen. Look at this. What an absolute piece of crap. I can't believe, you know, even when they're selling these things off the back of a truck, giving the freaking things away. Well, the guy paid $350 for this thing. And I mean, I, oh, I, I, I have no words to describe how bad this picture, I can't zoom it around, the only way I can zoom this thing is to move it in closer and make it smaller and maybe that's what we have to do because I tell you, um, 
We're not going to have much luck looking at it at that size, that's for sure. You are not going to believe this. Okay, we're actually looking at the LCD panel. The camera will actually focus on the LCD panel inside the projector. There's a little wheel on the bottom of this thing, and when I turn it, you see what this does? It actually tilts the panel. This is the skew adjustment. We'll just tilt the LCD panel back and forth so we can somehow try and get an accurate focus. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Real good technology there on this thing. I can't believe that somebody would actually try and build something like this. This is something like a science fair student in grade seven would try to put together. Now, I can't believe that I'm actually going to continue this little comparison between this piece of shit and my ViewSonic, but I gotta do it just because this is just too freaking funny, this thing. Okay, so we can try and focus this thing, but you know, that's about as sharp as it's going to get. And even with the little, even with the little adjustment on the bottom, which you turn it one way and it goes blurry on the top and bottom and you turn it the other way and it goes the opposite way of blurriness. So it's really the only place to have it is in the middle. Otherwise, you're going to change the focus on the top or the bottom. But even when it's set to the absolute sharpest that this thing can go, there's no freaking way in hell that this thing is 1080p. This thing's not even 480p. I'm going to guess this is more like 240p. You can't even see. You can't even see the gosh darn um, printing. What a joke. I'll put my, uh, I'll put something on, put some video on this thing here. This is my little, my home theater PC that I use. So, good XPMC on here. It's going to find my mouse. Now, I'm not going to show you anything that's copyright on here because we all know how <coughs> we all know how uh, YouTube loves to uh, really um, go after people for copyright infringement. So this is some of my own work uh, that I've done. I'm a professional photographer, professional videographer, and when I'm out and about in my travels, I take pictures, lots of them. And uh, so this is some of the stuff that I've done over the last 10 years. And this is just playing as a slideshow through XBMC. There we go. We got uh, some Las Vegas in here. And I can say that I know how good the pictures are and how good they play back at 1080p on my TV. And I'd be embarrassed if I showed somebody this quality and say, look at how great my camera is, look at how great the pictures are I take. I certainly would not ever, ever, ever show somebody, look at that. Oh, ah, oh, this is terrible. And I think the guy that, uh, that bought this thing, I hope he never sees his video because I'm sure he feels pretty, you know, he's probably pretty pissed that he actually paid money. I'm afraid to say that the uh, the screen that was given to him, which he was told was a 100 inch screen, and I, I guarantee you it's not even close to a 100 inch screen because I have a 108 inch screen and it's about twice the size. I'm going to say this is a 50 inch screen at best. Um, it's the Basically the screen's not much bigger than that picture that we're looking at here. Um, but uh, yeah, this is an absolute joke and um, well, the only thing this would be good for is I don't know putting on a wall with some something like this uh, just you know maybe using it as a security camera monitor or something because I tell you you yeah, certainly wouldn't watch anything you wouldn't watch any video on this maybe playing a Wii or some other standard definition uh, video game but I tell you uh, well I'm sure you can see it on the video here. This camera is good enough quality to pick this up. Let's zoom this thing in and you'll see the pixels that I'm talking about here. Look at that. I mean, you can... 
you can see all the pixels but then I, I didn't expect much I didn't expect anything out of this thing because it's a single panel it's a single panel LCD so it's like taking a one inch a one inch LCD TV like the little Casio color LCD screens when they came out and putting a big magnifying glass on it and shining a bright light through it. That's essentially what this is. We're going to take it apart and see what it looks like inside, but uh, this is just to show you how absolute path pathetic this thing is. I have never seen anything that has looked anything as piss poor as this. Like you can't even read fire station number one here. Uh, somehow it looks kind of like that might be a bald eagle, you know, but it's really tough to tell. And was that somebody's house? Is that a little shack or is that a mansion? I mean, this is... Oh, I, I can't look at it anymore. I'm going to hook up my ViewSonic and you'll see the difference. So that's my ViewSonic. Remember I showed you the light bulb from this thing? Well, this is what a real projection lamp looks like. A real projection lamp has its own internal parabolic reflector. It is a precision piece of equipment. They're all hand built by Philips. They're the only company that actually makes the lamp itself. These are all precision aligned, made by craftsmen by hand. And there's the lamp itself. They have internal uh, cooling screens and everything in them. And the air is pressurized through here. This is a 100 and I think this is 150. No, this one might be a 250 water. Uh, this is 250 watts. But it is a pure mercury lamp. Goes into the projectors like this. You just drop it in. Snap it down. And screw it in place. Now this projector will not operate without the cover in place. There's a little tab here which activates a switch. It's impossible to turn this projector on without that cover in place. The reason for that is, well, that lamp could explode. You certainly wouldn't want that happening if you had it apart. It's not going to cool properly if it doesn't have its housing in place. And these projectors emit a ton of ultraviolet rays. So you want to keep this thing contained. Now this projector is nine years old. I bought this thing nine years ago. It works. It's, it's lots of hours on it, but it works like a charm. But this is not new technology. This other one here was 2000, and I think the date on is like 2012 or 2013. I mean, hey, they claim it's a 3D projector and it's 1080p. This one here is a 7... This one's actually 1024 by 768. So it's not, it's a 4 by 3, it's not a 16 by 9. It will do 16 by 9, but it'll do it at you know, 1024 by 720. So it's not full HD, it's HD, but it's not full HD. But let's plug this one in and we'll compare it to the other one. You'll be amazed at the difference. Even as it's warming up, it's going to overpower this other one before it even gets warmed up. The other one's been running for 20 minutes. Here we go. And it's not even on high power yet. Yeah, that's a little more like it. Yep, yeah, starting to flicker. It's getting up to full power. You can actually pull the screen down and see what this looks like on the screen. I mean, look at how pathetic this is. I, I, this will not focus any sharper than that. I couldn't even see what I was doing to set it up for multiple monitors. I couldn't read where it says one, two, multiple monitor. Can you read that? I can't read that. Ugh, what a joke. Okay, that's this piece of shit. Now look what a real projector, and this is not a high-end projector, okay? My projector is a, it's a 
multimedia. It's a it's a data projector. It's not a high end projector, but it sure as hell looks a lot better than that thing. I mean, mine's only a 720 or 768 projector, but um, at least it looks proper. Let's get that slideshow playing on this one. See how it looks. Look at the difference here, even in the desktop, okay? I was wondering why my icons weren't showing up here. Because this thing, it cuts them off. It's only showing these two for my Cody, which are up here. But the uh, picture's cropped. It's not even displaying it as a, as a 16 by 9 image. It's displaying it as a 4 by 3. Oh, man, this thing is just... I can't believe that someone would actually sell something like this. But, as they say, there's a sucker born every minute. and uh, the, the, it, it was given to me. And he told me, as I think I already mentioned, that um, it was uh, guys that were selling them off the back of a truck. Reminds me of the old speaker scam going back, uh, you know, to the 80s where you'd pull into the shopping mall and there was a truck there and there was a couple guys selling speakers out of the back of a truck. That's what this reminds me of exactly. But uh, uh, I think you can see the difference in the picture. There's, well, there's no comparison between the two of these things. Come on. <laughs> no comparison at all. But I know what you guys want to see what this thing looks like inside, and I want to see how pathetic this thing is too, so we're going to tear this thing apart and uh, and take a look at the, the workings inside. I will say these pictures don't look bad on my uh, on my DLP, which is the one on the top right. They don't look bad on this, but um, they certainly look a lot better on the plasma. Uh, the, these pictures here they look okay, but they're kind of they don't have the contrast on this DLP uh, unit. That was a fantastic shot. I I shot that one at. That's about 3 o'clock, I guess, in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, where I took that picture. I was up above the Arctic Circle, and it, I, it was up almost at Alaska. And uh, it was in, right in the middle of summer, and the sun doesn't set. You know, you heard, you've heard of the midnight sun, right? Well, the sun doesn't completely go down, and it, it, it kind of dips down behind the hills there for a couple of hours between about 1 and 3 in the morning or so, and then it starts to rise again. So that was really, really early in the morning when that picture was taken. Not these ones, but the one that was on the screen when I was talking about it. Little blood moon. Full uh, lunar eclipse. There's Seton Lake up in uh, Little Wet. Got some fantastic pictures there. Anyway, enough of my... Uh, bragging about my photos. Let's take this piece of crap apart and see what uh, makes this thing tick. You know, at first I thought about giving this thing away. I thought, well, you know, I can give this thing away. And, uh, but even giving this thing away, I think I would kind of feel guilty of passing such a piece of crap on to somebody else. You know, I would feel guilty. Especially if I handed it to them in the box and they, they were expecting a 1080p 3D picture as this thing claims it is. It claims it's a 1080p 3D. Um, so, I don't know, maybe we'll blow this thing up. What do you think? Should we um, put a high voltage through it and blow it up? Light it on fire, put a hammer through it? I'll, I'll consider what to, what to do with this thing. Because, 
actually, you know, I probably won't throw it out or blow it up or do anything else with it. What will probably end up happening with this piece of junk is it will uh, end up out of my patio so that when I'm sitting outside in the summer in the evening having a beer, I can put something on and put that screen out and I actually could watch the thing. And I wouldn't care if moisture got to it and wrecked it. That would be the least of my concern. So good chance I'll just hang on to this piece of junk and put it outside. Because really, that's about all this thing is good for. Oh, it's got air filters on it. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it has any. Oh, it's got little speakers on it. They're air filters that, that, that double as the speaker grill. So there is the, uh, yeah, there's the unit itself. And uh, they lied. I'm looking on the box here, and the box says it has a one chip, one inch HDTV resolution. But you know what? There's the LCD panel. It's more like it's a seven inch. There's a little lens in the front here. It's a seven inch LCD screen like you'd have on like a tablet. There's the LCD screen there. It's got a little Presnel lens here that when you turn this when you turn this little wheel when you turn this little wheel it moves this lens. That's the skewing adjustment. Little little lens that moves, a little fan here blowing air, blows it, sucks air in here, blows air through this panel, through the LCD panel. This is the lamp housing, so I don't know why this fan's continuing to run. It's not like it's hot anymore. We'll just unplug the power. I want to take this housing apart. I want to see what the what goes on inside here. This is uh, inquiring minds definitely want to know. I'm going to get my monitor going here so that I can see what I'm doing on my real LCD. Okay, now I can see what I'm doing. So we're going to remove these screws. I may be asking for trouble. I think I just removed the LCD panel too. Nope, maybe not. We'll uh, We'll cut these tie downs for now. That way we can lift this assembly out. And see exactly what's under here. And basically, there we have it. We have. Oh, this is bad. This is uh, this is almost embarrassing that somebody would would actually even uh, try and market something like this. I think uh, I think it gave them too much credit when I said a grade save grade seven science fair project. Uh, basically, what this is is they've taken. They've taken an LCD panel here, just a nice seven inch, looks like a seven inch LCD panel. They've put a, a lens behind it. Well, oh, we can even take that lens out. Woo, woo. Put a lens in behind the panel. The light bulb is back here. There's another lens in front of the light. We saw the light before when I took the light housing apart, so there's no point in doing that. It's just a, it's just a, a double-ended metal halide 250 or 350 watt lamp. They say it's a 350, but who knows what they're driving it at. We got a ballast here for it. This will be the ballast for the lamp. And um, this is probably the power supply for the, for the video board. Video board's over here. LCD screen is connected down here somewhere. And uh, light shines through this lens, which sits in that holder. 
project the pictures produced on the LCD panel goes through this other Fresnel lens and then on to the big lens that magnifies the screen. Let's uh, power this piece of shit up while it's uh, apart and see what it does. Okay, power button's over here somewhere. Okay, power on. <coughs> <coughs> There we go, our light's on. You already can see the image. You can see the image on the LCD screen here now. Yeah, you see the light color temperature changing. Classic uh, metal halide. Hey, at least this thing uses cheap light bulbs. These aquarium bulbs are only like 40 bucks, right? 40 bucks, 35, 40 bucks. They're dirt cheap. They're not like a $500 or $400 um, UHP lamp that's uh, used on uh, a real projector. And that's why I say I could keep this thing, put it out in my patio. It's got speakers on it. I just take my wireless uh, set-top box from my TV service provider, take it outside, plug it into this thing, turn it on, the speakers are in here, I don't have to worry about taking out sound, my other one does, well the other one has sound, but it does, only has very very low sound and it doesn't have HDMI, my other projector is too old, so I have to feed it with, um, I have to feed it with component, we'll just tilt this little lens out of the way and I'll move the camera so you can actually see the picture on this panel a little better. So as you can see, the image is upside down on here, and it's reversed by the lens, but it's just a basic 7-inch LCD panel. Real LCD projectors typically use three LCD panels, and they typically use 3.7 or 3 1-inch panels one for the red, one for the green, and one for the blue. And that's what kind of threw me, but it said, it said, single one inch panel. Well, this doesn't have a one inch panel. It's got a seven inch panel. It's like the old sharp one. I saw a sharp uh, projector probably a dozen years ago. It was the same idea. It didn't use as big a panel as this. It actually used, I think it was like a, what, a four inch panel, but it was the same, along the same lines as this. I mean, it was just an absolute joke. How much heat's coming off that lamp? Well, you can get a suntan off that thing pretty quick. Pretty warm. But anyway, there's the, uh, the operation of this thing. So there's not, uh, there's not a lot to it. It's not very bright. It has a terrible picture. But it is what it is. Buyer beware. When you see people selling things out of the back of a truck, run, don't walk, because this is the crap that they sell. It's the same game that was happening back in the 80s, where they were selling speakers saying, hey, come on, I'll sell you some Wharfdales for $250, or else I'll sell you some JBLs for $300. These are $2,000 in the store. That stereo store over there, two grand, I'll give them to you for $300. It was a, they fell off the back of a truck. Or, you know, the truck was in an accident and some of the boxes were damaged and we bought them from the insurance company. You know, we're giving the deal, we're passing the deal on to you. Uh, if it appears to be too good to be true, then guess what? It's too good to be true. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.